evening. My name is Nikki, and you are here for the show called Meet the Candidates. I will be interviewing different candidates that are running for Flint City Council. Tonight, my guest is Mr. Davis. How are you tonight, Mr. Davis? I'm doing very well, thank you. Great, great. Can you let our viewers know what ward you're running for? I'm running for the fifth ward. Okay, and is this your first time running? Are you a councilman now? No, it's my first time running. Okay, okay. And can you tell our viewers exactly what is a city councilman? What does a city councilman do? A city councilman, from my perspective, is he is supposed to be a representat representative of his ward and, most importantly, his county or his city. Mm -hmm. um, he's always supposed to educate the people about what's going on in, the, in concerns of the city. Um, he's supposed to educate the people and take some of their issues to the city if they can, if they can be addressed, to see if they can bring some improvement to our city. Try to correct some of the problems that we're having in our city. And that's what a city councilman is to me. Okay. So, can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Well, me, I'm a full-time student. Um, I go to Phoenix University. I graduate next year. I'm a promoter. I promote uh, cabarets. Uh, I'm a full-time worker. I'm a custodian worker. Um, I'm married. Uh, I'm basically off into politics. I'm a political activist. I helped uh, with, a, with an organization called the Stand Up for Democracy get Public Act 4 repealed mm -hmm. when it was time to try to get the emergency manager removed from our city. Um, that's basically it. Okay, so you say you're running for a fifth ward. Mm -hmm. Can you tell our viewers what geographical area that is? That's near Rankin Street all the way towards downtown, from my understanding. I'm still trying to get a better understanding of how far the fifth ward stretches out. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And what do you plan on doing for the fifth ward? Are there any areas in particular that I, stick out to you? Well, not only the fifth ward, all the wards. Our whole city is crippled. I think that we need some better leaders in, in, in place that can actually try to bring some remedy to the problems that we have. We have murder at a highest rate. We have lack of employment. As, at a higher rate. Um, we have a lot of issues. We have vacant houses. We have um, devalued neighborhoods that need to bring the value up in our neighborhoods. Uh, we have elders and seniors who has issues that's not being addressed. They have voices that's not being heard. Uh, we, we need attention to our whole entire city in all spectrums of life. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the issues that I want to address in dealing with my city. I don't believe that I can rectify all those issues in four years, but I do believe that there's some things that can be rectified and there's some things that can bring some resolve to it that has not had any resolve to it at all. Okay. So Okay, so what made you want to run for Flint City Council? Because I seen that we lack leadership. Mm -hmm. We lacked um we lack we lack in the education when it concerns our city. A lot of our people are not being educated by the city councilmen. And I'm only going to speak about my ward. I'm not going to speak about any other ward. I'm just going to speak about my ward. We have a city councilman that doesn't get out and educate the people about what's concerning our city. We don't educate the people about what's better suitable for them and our city as a whole. For example, dealing with the water issue. We feel that and out of ignorance, which is just not knowing. We feel that the water issue in building the pipeline from Flint to Port Huron was a good issue. And I do not, from my understanding of it and my education of it, it's not. Because once the county get, once the water pipeline get built from Flint to Port Huron, the city loses that asset. It goes to the county. Mm -hmm. We generate $45 million a year in dealing with that water when we get it from Detroit to Flint. We sell it to the neighboring counties and we generate that type of money. But when they build that pipeline from Flint to Port Huron, we lose that asset. Mm -hmm. And the people was not educated about that. And it does not necessarily mean that the prices of our water is going to go down. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to, it's going to happen that way. So our people was not informed about that as well. I think whenever you want our citizens to be in agreement with something that concerns our city, they should understand the pros and the cons of that activity. 
They should be educated about that activity. They should understand what may not happen, what may happen, what could happen, so that they can have a full grip on what's going to occur in their city. City council in my ward does not educate the people about those things. And I think that our people should have a better education of what's going on in our city, and they do not. Okay, you touched on two good subjects there, the educational part and the pipeline part. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the schools? I feel that our schools, I feel that we have not invested into our education like we should. I feel that closing down all the schools, to me, is a catastrophe because all the schools that's being closed down is actually closed down in an urban community, but that our kids eventually is going to have to drive far and beyond to go to a school. And if they miss the bus and their parents doesn't have a car, unfortunately, they're going to miss school for that day. Exactly. You know, I feel that these schools that are closed down, if so, we can turn them into a recreation center, like Burston. We can have door school, which they're about to close down, become a a recreation center for after school programs. So if the kids are going far out to go to school, then they can go to Dort school or cook school and have a little recreation, you know, because if their energy, if the kids energy is not being controlled in a manner where they can produce positive energy, then when you allow the kids to just run around, they say the idle mind sits on devil's playground. Exactly. So if you cannot try to structure the kids in a manner but that they can use this energy that they have for something positive, then we're just going to have a, 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 a revolving circle. Exactly, exactly. Wow, you're touching on some really good subjects there. Let's touch on another one, public safety. Public safety, wow, yeah. okay. <laughs> public safety, what do you want me to talk about public safety? Do you plan on, because I know they say that we have a lack of police officers the timing for police officers to arrive is like very, very slow. I believe city council should get involved where that if there is an issue involved in, pertaining to their community or their ward, mm -hmm. then they should be able to have, the people should be able to have the telephone numbers to the city councilmen. The city councilmen should be the one to make the phone call to the police or the state police and speak to the captain, have the captain telephone number. Mm -hmm. Call the captain and say, hey, we have an issue at 525... Harriet Street or 666 uh, Witherby Street, and there's an issue that needs your attention. We should be able to have recourse in dealing with the police department, but I tell you this much, it doesn't matter how many police officers we have running the streets. If we do not have a strong economy, it's going to create, it's going to be worse than what it is next, then than what it is now. Right. Whenever you're living in a city that's poor, crime produces is produced out of that. Until we find a way to generate some revenue and create jobs where that it can be less people unemployed, you have more people unemployed than people that are employed. Yes. And I don't know to what degree of these people that are employed who do not live in our city. Mm -hmm. So when you're having a great multitude of people that's living in our city, I mean that's working in our city but do not live in our city, then we lose revenue. Yes, we do. It taxes our economy. Because they work here, when they pay their taxes, it do not go into our general fund. When they spend their money, they do not spend it here. They spend it back where they're from. So that is the issue that we need to get corrected, is employment. Find out how many people live in the city, works in the city. Until we can get that situated and get that under control, then we can worry about how our safety of our community is going to be. Because you have officers being laid off now. I speak to officers that's laid off now because there's no there's no money in the general fund. Exactly, exactly. That brings me to the deficit that we have. Yeah. Is it what nineteen million? Something like that. Wow. So, since we're talking about emergency, can you explain to the viewers the difference in the mayor and the emergency manager? We have to actually bring in an emergency manager. We brought an emergency manager here. We really didn't need an emergency manager if we would have had city council and transit and built us a transition team where that we can build our own financial. Whenever an emergency manager comes to a city, he comes to strip the city of their assets. He sells off anything that he can to call himself balancing in the budget. But you don't balance the budget. You just put our city in a worse situation than what we was before you got here. Okay. For example, Kurt signed for the water line.
from Flint to Port Huron. Mm -hmm. Sony did that. Now he's saying he's about to resign. We kept telling them over and over that this is their approach. They're trying to take our assets. We only got two assets. We got Hurley Hospital and we got the water. Hurley Hospital, when it was written, was said that it could never be sold when it was given to the city. But the water is one, is one of our greatest revenues. Matter of fact, it is the greatest revenue that we have. But when you give it away to the county, that which is going to occur, then what did the emergency manager do? He made our city worse, not then, than what it is now. Because when he leaves, what other recourses are we going to have? How are we going to generate 40 some million dollars in revenue from the 40 some million dollars that we're going to lose? Mm -hmm. So anything that the city manager put in effect while he's in office in that position, can that ever be overwritten? Like you said, he may resign. So can those decisions... Well, be right now they're talking about, am I right, Public Act 436. This is what they're talking about, you know. And I guess we we're going to probably eventually try to come up with some type of transition team where whatever, we won't need him anymore. But the thing of the matter is, how are we going to ever rebound from dealing with this water? Somebody got to be accountable for this money that we're going to lose in revenue. And mindful, this money was placed in the general fund when it should have never been placed in the general fund. It should have been used particularly and specifically for the water. So if it was used in the general fund, it was used because other money was being misappropriated. Mm -hmm. So now if we no longer have the water, we no longer have the revenue from the water, then how is the $45 million, even if you use it for the general fund? It's, which means is it's going to cripple our general fund even more. Mm -hmm. So, so we're really, just basically going to be adding on to our $19 million. Adding on to our problem. Okay. A okay. problem that's going to be unresolved mm -hmm. and worse then than what it is now. Okay. Mr. Davis, you have some very, very good and valid points right there. Why don't you tell our viewers why they should elect you for Fifth Ward? I feel that they should elect me for Fifth Ward City Councilman because I would be a servant, a loyal servant to my community. I would engage with the people on a consistent basis. Things that I cannot resolve, I would abreast them to what it is that I cannot resolve. And I would try to seek recourse in the people who can resolve it and bring the information back to the people. See, the laws is made for the people by the people. We make the laws. We make the difference. We make the changes. And until we can come together on one accord, we will never be able to rectify any of our problems in our city. Everybody has an issue, but nobody is bringing those issues and placing it on the table, and everybody is embracing it and trying to bring resolve to one of them at a time. Mm -hmm. In order for us to make any correction in our city, we all have to be on one accord. And my duty and my job is to abreast the people to the problems that we have, mm -hmm. keep them informed of what's going on, and engage with them. Sometimes that's all they want is a little engagement. Keep me abreast of what's going on. Tell me what it is that I can do. Educate the people of what they can do. And people may help. Keyword, there is communication. Lack of communication mm -hmm. creates a misunderstanding. Strong communication creates a better understanding. Mr. Davis, I truly thank you for coming out. Is there anything else you would like to say? I just want people to know that I will be a loyal servant to them. And whatever it is that I cannot assist in, I will be frank with them and let them know that I, that I cannot assist them in that matter. But most of the things that our city is going through, I will most definitely try very hard and give 175% of my effort to be a loyal servant to them and my community because we are crippled and we will remain to be crippled until we find that law, sincere, and genuine servant. And I will be that servant. Thank you for speaking with us, Mr. Davis. Okay. We'll be back.